Take a look at the lineup for the Mets. If you have been paying attention throughout this NLCS, you'll notice there are no changes. Reyes, Loduca, Beltran, the top three. Delgado, Wright, and Green, the middle three. Valentin, Chavez, and Glavin, the bottom three. Jeff Weaver, the right-hander, five and four with the Cardinals, an ERA of over five. He had a terrific September and has been even better in the postseason. And here's his pitcher profile brought to you by Exxon and Mobile Retailers. Both of these pitchers pitching very well in game one. So why change the scouting report when the ball, when the arm is up, the ball is down. Can he come inside the lefties? And that is one of the key points that's going to be happening to Jeff Weaver tonight. Improvement under Duncan but whether he can pitch the left handed hitters and there are six in the lineup inside Weaver gets ready to go in the NLCS is brought to you by Budweiser select brewed longer for a bold taste that finishes clean expect everything what should we expect here tonight Reyes trying to get on and start the night to his left Eckstein no time and a base hit for Jose Reyes to begin the Mets evening Ball hit hard and Eckstein gets a glove on it but it trickles out of the webbing a base hit an infield hit for Reyes on the first pitch Jose going up looking away hit it hard and Eckstein could not come up with the play. Would have been hard pressed. Had it not popped out of his glove to get up and throw Reyes out. Folks have been talking about the Mets number one in the National League in team steals with 146 during the regular season. They have two in this series but the big reason why they have only two is that Reyes and Wright two of their big stolen base guys have not gotten on base. Jeff Kellogg calls that first pitch a ball to Loduca. We haven't seen much of that game within the game of Molina and Reyes. Ground ball left side in the hole X time. Out at second. X time comes up with this one from his knees to get Reyes. Yeah, that was an outstanding play. I mean, X time already the first two hitters. He's involved in the first two plays of this game, having to make a dive to his left and one to his right. They boo Beltron. They keep booing him. He keeps hitting home runs. In game number four on Sunday night, Carlos hit two, was on base five times, and it's been said a thousand times since. Eleven NLCS games against Cardinal pitching. He's gone deep seven times. And Molina, just in case they didn't have the scouting report down, or maybe they want to change it entirely, is out to talk to Jeff Weaver. When Molina went out to talk to Weaver, Tony La Russa brought Barry Weinberg out with him to check the left shoulder of Eckstein after this diving stop. Yeah the the left shoulder looked like it took the brunt of the body he dived to his left as Luis said on the first play to Reyes. And that was awkward and looked like he could have hurt that left shoulder on the dive to his right. Said he's all right, but is he? Still stretching it out. A guy who missed about a month with a strained oblique muscle came back, injured his hamstring, and now here in game five of the NLCS, his left shoulder takes that hit. Here's Beltron with Delgado on deck, a leadoff hit by Reyes. Loduca bounces into the force out. And now Roland wants to come in and talk to Weaver. Let's take a look at the MasterCard keys to the game as Roland goes back to his position. Continued production from the terrifying middle part of the order for the Mets, primarily Beltron and Delgado, and a different approach against Glavin for the Cardinals. First pitch to Beltron is a bit high, ball one. Weaver, two times now, has had two pitches here in the 
opening inning that he thought were strikes didn't get him and the body language for Weaver is never hard to read. He can let a home plate umpire get under his skin quicker than any pitcher in the league. Two and oh. You know, Tim, when you talked about Weaver and the scouting report having to get the ball inside, he has to be very careful because his ball runs back out over the plate to left handed hitters because of his release point and the way he lets go of the ball. So when he wants to come into these guys, he has to come way off the plate. If not, he's going to get hurt. Yeah, if you miss, miss inside. The 2 0. Beltron rips it through the hole into right. Loduca will hold at second, and it's first and second, one out with Delgado coming up. A 2 0 pitch and a rocket through the right side off the bat of Beltron. If you get it between Belliard and Pujols, you have to hit it awfully hard because Belliard plays Beltron in the hole. You can see that release one. We talked about it earlier. If the arm is up, the ball goes down. That was a flat release. You hear that a lot about release points. When, when the arm is down, a pitcher almost pushes the ball, and that was a flat fastball hit hard. Now Delgado. He is sitting 414 this postseason. 34 year old first baseman. 12 plus years in the big leagues. 1600 plus games finally getting to the postseason and making the most of it. Strike one. And that's where you have to pitch him and that's where the Cardinals have not been pitching him throughout the series inside. There's a good pitch. From Jeff Weaver. And right there, you can see he ties his hands up inside. And when Delgado is being successful, he's getting his arms extended through the ball. Two on, one out. Back inside. It misses ball one. How about Delgado this postseason? Seven games. There's the average four homers, 11 RBIs, and a couple of three run shots in this NLCS. Inside two and one. The Cardinals are going to try and change their hitting approach against Glavin. Obviously, they're trying to change their pitching approach against Delgado. And if you're Jeff Weaver, you don't need anybody to tell you that Delgado has owned you over the years a 500 career average. That's a foul two and two. You press him inside enough, three fastballs inside, and then a changeup. Oh, and, de and definitely when Delgado comes to the plate, he knows he's had success against him. And he knows exactly what pitches he's hit off of Weaver in the past. A 2 1 changeup hit foul, and now with two on, one out, two balls, two strikes. Reaching for it, Pujols will flip the second for the out. That's it. First and third, two down. Delgado retired by Weaver on a soft roller, and the out 3 6 with Pujols to X done. Worthy of a sequence to Delgado. Inside, fouled off. Inside, he misses. Inside again with the fastball, and now the changeup, he's out in front. Change up, he's out in front. Good job of working Delgado then by Weaver. Yeah, and for that change up to be successful like it was there, he did exactly what he had to do to Delgado. He kept showing him in, in, in. Delgado was conscious of the inside pitch, and then he went with a change up away to have him roll over. Now the guy the Mets are waiting to get back in the mix, David Wright, on the outside corner, strike one. Wright homered in game four two nights ago. And he's behind on the count after this pitch. Wright, who hit 311 during the regular season, has one hit in 13 at bats in this series. Farther away, one ball, one strike. The one hit was a home run, which put the Mets out in front two nights ago for a short time at the top of the third. Green on deck. Two and one. 
Tony La Russa telling us before the game that for as much has been made about the extra day of rest for Tom Glavin. He thinks getting that rain out last night and allowing Weaver a power pitcher a chance to get another day. It's more important for his pitcher 2 1 delivery. 2 and 2. Four straight sliders to David Wright from Jeff Weaver. David Eckstein will indeed lead off, and I say that for a reason. We'll tell you about it in a second. Eckstein, Wilson, Fuhls at the top. Encarnacion, Roland, and Edmonds in the middle with Belliard, Molina, and Jeff Weaver, the bottom three. David Eckstein, as we saw in the top of the inning, was checked on by the Cardinal trainer after making two diving plays, one to his left, one to his right. Then he went down at the end of the top of the first, and I'm sure hit. Took some swings off the tee, maybe took some swings in the cage to make sure his shoulder was okay. Was late getting out there, but he will make the at bat against Glavin, who misses with ball one. Hard to believe his uniform's that dirty without even hitting yet. It's his first at bat. Check this out. Here's a 1 0. 2 0 from Glavin. I thought it was interesting to listen to Kevin Kennedy prior to tonight's game. Talk about the home plate umpire Jeff Kellogg being the type of umpire that will squeeze a pitcher that would not typically be good news for Glavin who likes to work on the edges of the strike zone it's two and one this postseason the 40 year old has not allowed a run the opposite way and a base hit for Exton. Going the other way, first opportunity, high fastball away. Good job of hitting by X time. Tom Glavin's pitcher profile is brought to you by Exxon and Mobile Retailers. The unflappable Tommy Glavin. Pitching right handers inside more, but again, as we said in the opening, if you're a right handed hitter, you have to go the other way. And there's Kevin Kennedy's point about that generous home plate umpire who may not be so generous tonight. Preston Wilson one on nobody out. High from Glavin again everything's been up. Yeah really when you talk about generous umpire you're talking about the corners of the plate. If he gets that pitch on the outside corner Glavin is the type of pitcher who'll go just a little bit further away and see how much he can get off that plate. Inside two and oh. Preston Wilson has two hits and nine at bats against the Mets in this series. Wilson pops it into center field. Beltron settles underneath it, and here's Tom Glavin talking about the strike zone when he first broke into the big leagues. Strike zone went from being kind of that east-west strike zone when I broke into the game to being more of a north and south strike zone. Um, so that was an adjustment that I had to make, and you know I was, I'm always it was always the kind of pitcher that I tried to expand on the outside part of the plate as much as I could, and, and now with the strike zone being the way that it is, you can't do that anymore. So you have to try and get that portion of the strike zone back somewhere. And for me, it was it was pitching inside more, and, and you know it was more necessity than anything else. Well, what will he do against Albert Pujols, who does not have an RBI in this series, and that will continue. As he flies one into right center field, Beltron is there, two out. Pujols, four out of 15 in this NLCS, no run production at all. Been bothered by a bad hamstring, and that's been something that Tony La Russa, Tim, 
talked about yesterday that it's that right hamstring that power backside and he thinks it's affecting his power stroke talk about it a lot with pitchers how something's wrong with if he's a right hander that right leg he can't push off of that leg and the same is true for a hitter you have hamstring problems pushing off and exhibiting that power that Pujols has so much of just can't do it Encarnacion up there ready to swing and I think his follow through came back and hit Loduca. Normally hitters will tell catchers that they have a follow through and this hit Loduca right on the back of the left hand. Encarnacion letting the top hand go and the end of the bat hitting Loduca on the top of the left hand. Paul appears to be all right. You'll notice Luis every time they show replays of that nature with a catcher Tim will wince. Yeah. <laughs> He's been there done that right. <laughs> Check on Eckstein over at first who has two steals in the postseason. Encarnacion. Is a 333 career hitter against Glavin. 13 out of 39. X9 starts and stops, and Encarnacion fouls at 0 and 2. And really, most major league hitters are geared up for the fastball. So when Glavin's throwing changeups 73, 74 miles an hour, that's usually speed below batting practice for a lot of uh, guys that hit in batting practice. So a lot of these guys don't get very good swings off against him. Ball one to Encarnacion. And when they, when they do make contact, they can't center the ball on the sweet part of the bat. A lot of balls off the end of the bat. He doesn't jam that many hitters. Not going to get that many bats through the course of an evening. He can keep it off the sweet part of the bat with the best effort. Weaver got into and out of trouble. Two hits by the Mets in their half of the first. But outs made by Delgado and Wright. Got the Cardinals out of trouble and another check on Eckstein. Cardinals did this year against left handed starters. X9 is going. Loduca's throw is too late. I think with X9 running, what it did was take the pitch away from Glavin. That pitch was a strike, it appeared to me. But because Loduca had to do so much movement, Encarnacion going down, Glavin doesn't get the strike, and X9 gets the stolen base. If the catcher can sit still and frame a pitch like that, it's a lot different for the home plate umpire. But because he has to move and throw, he didn't get the strike call. And Carnacion now with the RBI chance and a 2 2 count. Jammed him, broke his bat. There's one for the pile. Lavin makes the out at first. Cardinals get a leadoff hit and a steal. Leave one. And after one, no score. Sean Green first up for the Mets here in the second inning. No score. Each side threatened in their half of the first inning. And this matchup of Weaver and Glavin rolls on. Green takes a tailing pitch for a strike. Four hits, 13 trips in this NLCS. Valentin and Andy Chavez the next two hitters and Green fights it off it's 0 2. Game six will be a matchup. Chris Carpenter. and John Main and then game seven it's Jeff Supon for the Cardinals against. Pitcher X. TBD. I think they legitimately don't know at this point who's going to start if there is a game seven for the Mets. I agree with you. Sometimes they keep that information hidden. I think they need to see how the next two games play out to figure out who's left. 
Yeah, particularly tonight, whether Darren Oliver pitches tonight. Green did not go. Ball one. So you have to pull out all stops now. You're, you're toward the end of the road here. Everybody's trying to get to Detroit now. So pitchers and everybody's at full strength. They all want to be out there and try to help their ball club win games. So much so that Glavin said that game seven would be his usual side day. And he would throw his name into the hat as a guy who could give some innings. Green bounces to Belliard. Do you think the Mets are tight? I don't. Jose Reyes never is before the game in the dugout. <laughs> and then Woodward and Laduca. That's the Mets. And then yesterday we were in the Cardinal Clubhouse with the rain pounding down here at Bush Stadium. Valentin takes a ball. They were throwing a football around inside their clubhouse, and so Taguchi, the Japanese born outfielder, threw a football for the first time in his life in the clubhouse. Perfect. Anything to try and stay loose. Perfect spiral for just Montana esque. The 1 0 to Valentin is popped into right. Late break, and Carnacion has time to up. Andy Chavez is coming to the plate. He's been in the lineup every day since the third inning of game number one. And earlier today, Cliff Floyd was testing out that strained left Achilles, and it just doesn't look good at all. In case you're a Mets fan wondering where one of the bigger bats on your roster is and if he's available, the pinch hit, and that's it. So Chavez has been the starter and he's two out of 15 against the Cardinals takes a ball. You got to even wonder if Floyd can pinch hit because it's his back leg at being a left handed hitter and usually most hitters that are power hitters use their legs to drive. Same thing we talk about with pool holes in the hamstring. That's upstairs two and oh. Chavez trying to get on and bring Glavin to the plate here with two out in the second. Jeff Weaver in his time with the Angels and his time with the Cardinals. That slap down toward the corner. Will it stay fair? It does. Chavez will dig into second base. Wilson gets it out of the corner. It's a two out double. Power for a little man watching him in batting practice today. Launched three over the center field fence here at Bush Stadium. It's this one hard down the left field line and he at least clears Glavin but keep in mind Glavin a very very good hitting pitcher. Nine out of 53 during the regular season he has been hitless in the postseason to this point runner at second with two out. Chance for the Mets here and Glavin trying to help his cause for the hit. Strike one. Best arm in the outfield, so you know, is by far out in center field with Jim Edmonds. Strong and accurate. One ball, one strike. Started to say Weaver in his home whites, whether he's been in an angel uniform or a cardinal uniform, two and seven, with an ERA of 7.7 .7 this season. 1 1 pitch. The opposite way. Eckstein, a long throw. Glavin running is out by 20. A double by Chavez. He is left on. Mets have already stranded three. Bottom of the second in St. Louis, no score. A battle here in game five. The series even two games apiece. Scott Rowland first up for St. Louis in the second. Takes a ball from Tom Glavin. Rowland is in the lineup for one serious reason and that is his history against Glavin 19 of 53 with two home runs off his left hander into right field and Green will play it on a bounce. Roland is on with a leadoff hit and we will check in with Ken Rosenthal and talk about 
Game 7 starter possibilities for the Mets. Tim, when you played in Game 7 of the 1968 World Series, your starting pitcher was Bob Gibson. Luis, 2001 World Series, your Game 7 starter, Kurt Schilling. As you guys mentioned before, the Mets promise they will have a starter in Game 7. They're just not sure who it will be. The leading candidate right now, presuming he doesn't get burned in one of the next two nights, is left-hander Darren Oliver. Good choice. Oliver pitched six scoreless innings of relief in Game 3. Only one problem. He hasn't started a game, guys, since August 5th, 2004. Thank you, Ken. And if it's not him, then it could be Traxel. It could be Oliver Perez on short rest. Those are the three leading candidates as Edmonds swung through strike one. And it could be a starter in name only. It could be a starter as part of the bullpen, which is, uh, I guess, as reasonable as any other choice. But that's all if there is a game seven. All right. Tim, I know he said you had Gibson. I liked our chances. We had Schilling and Randy Johnson came out of the bullpen for us. You won. We didn't. Yeah, but okay, that's 1968. But you could talk about 1967. True. You could talk about 1964 against the Yankees and Mel Stottlemyre. That guy was pretty good. Bob Gibson. He was as big a game pitcher as there's ever been. One ball, two strikes on Edmonds. And Jim just gets a piece. Glavin with his 290 wins, his two Cy Young Awards, his World Series MVP trophy from 1995. Now in his fourth year with the Mets, and this has been by far his best. 15 and 7, a good ERA. Eight games under 500 with New York coming into this season. Gets Edmonds to chase, and that's out number one in the first strikeout for Glavin. Your point, Gonzo, about if you swing at that pitch on the corner, he'll keep going outside as he does on Edmonds. Way ahead in the count, teases Jim, and gets it. He's a crafty left-handed pitcher. These guys like him and Kenny Rogers are like a fine wine. They get better with age. Are there any crafty right-handers? No. One on, one out. Belliard takes the ball. There actually are, but they're not called crafty right-handers for whatever reason. Lavin's old teammate Greg Maddox would be in the category of a crafty right-hander. Yeah. A 1 0 pitch, 2 0 to Belliard. I like to call a guy like Maddox Picasso because he's a good painter. He paints as well as anybody in the game. Working the outside part of the plate, and now, as we heard from him in the first inning, the inside part of the plate more than he ever has. A 2 0 pitch. Not getting the call, and it's 3 0. Well, Picasso worked until he was about 90, didn't he? Glavin's 40, which is pitcher's age is about what 78. <laughs> He's getting there. <laughs> Three and out the count, one on, one out, and in at the knees, three and one. On deck has been the Cardinals' best hitter, with runners in scoring position in this series, Yadier Molina. One on, one out. Off the end of the bat foul with Roland running from first. It's a full count. That's what Clavin could do. He has as good a control with his changeup as he does his fastball. And he throws that changeup many, many different speeds. 73, 78, 82. Varies his fastballs. And here's the grip on the 3 1. Fastball count to Belliard who cued it off the bat. Ronnie has been a much better hitter this postseason, the early part of the game. Innings one through six, he's hitting 471. From the seventh inning on, he has one hit and ten at bats. What's he going to get on three and two? He's going to get strike three and the throw down to second. The strike him out, throw him out, inning ending double play. A combo of Glavin, Loduca down to second. We go to the third inning. 
here in St. Louis. Cards and Mets no score. It's the top of the third, top of the order for the Mets. Reyes, Loduca, Beltron against Jeff Weaver. No score, and ball one down and away to Reyes, who went after the first pitch in the first and picked up an infield single. So far in this LCS, the Mets are hitting 241 as a team. They hit 264 as a club during the regular season. That mark was good for eighth in the National League. Rick Down, the hitting instructor for the Mets. He's been also with the Yankees and the Orioles. That is up and away. It's 3 0. Jose Reyes had exactly twice as many walks this year as he had last year. Better on base percentage. Takes a high strike and it's three and one. Bo Duke awaiting on deck and a three one pitch. Reyes gets under it and pops it up. X dying the shortstop. One away. Two weeks from tonight, right here on Fox, Standoff returns all new at its new time, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, followed by the Emmy Award winning smash hit, House, at its new time, 9 Eastern, 8 Central. It all starts two weeks from tonight on Fox. Your discretion is advised. One out, nobody on, and Paulo Duca will dig his way in. He's been bothered in playing with a sore left thumb and so when he was hit on that continuation of the swing by Encarnacion in the bottom of the first probably why it stung a little more than it might otherwise he played the entire second half with a bad thumb hit 318 for the regular season. Four hits in this NLCS, and he flies one into right center for Edmonds. Jeff Weaver off to a good start tonight. Same thing he provided for the Cardinals back in game one. Two up. Tell you, with the pounding that a catcher's hands take during the course of a season, it's remarkable. That Loduca can hit for that high an average, 318. And Joe Maurer with the Minnesota Twins, the first catcher to ever win an American League batting crown this year. Just remarkable. That's on the inside corner. Strike to Beltron who singled his first time up. Weaver taking a little extra time between pitches and Beltron hops out. The two guys named Carlos have dominated Cardinal pitching in this series, whether it's Beltron or Delgado. Weaver has Beltron set up at 0 2. Off the end of the bat, and three fly ball outs. Bottom of the third in St. Louis, no score. Was bottom of the third inning, no score. That means that Molina, Weaver, and Eckstein will be the hitters against Glavin. Strike one on Molina. I talked about how good this guy's been in the postseason with runners in scoring position, hitting 500. But Tony Larusa had a good explanation. To why Molina is so hot after hitting 216 in the regular season. He says as he grounds out to short, he gets to start fresh. No more trying to make up for a bad April and May. Trying to get three hits a night. We go back to the 
efforts by Loduca so far tonight. Watch uh, on the steal right here with uh, David Eckstein how much quicker Loduca gets rid of the ball because he has to. Eckstein actually has a better jump. Roland did not have a good jump, and Paul framed the pitch and then threw Roland out. So two stolen base attempts. One made it, the other didn't. Eckstein in the first. Roland was caught stealing to end the second. Weaver had a hit against Glavin in game one. Okay, raise your hand if you think Jeff Weaver's making himself a little money right now. By the way, he's pitched in this NLCS and in the division series against San Diego. He won 14 games last year with the Dodgers and signed a one year $8.3 million deal with the Angels. He went 3 and 10 with Los Angeles. They basically cut him loose, did a minor league deal with the Cardinals, and the Cardinals are awfully happy they pulled the trigger on that to get Weaver. Picked him off the scrap heap, and he has turned in two and a half gems this postseason, two out. Uh, it seems to me that if he does uh, sign with a club for next year, it'll be the Cardinals because of the improvement with Dave Duncan. Dave Duncan and Tony La Russa have, have really worked miracles with a number of pitchers. The two most celebrated, Dennis Eckersley, Dave Stewart with the Oakland Athletics, but many, many others in between. The improvement and the confidence that he's gained yeah. with these guys. Yeah. It still may come down to money. Money, <laughs> money, money, money. With two out, nobody on. Eckstein takes a strike from Glavin. The Angels three and ten with the Cardinals six and five. That doesn't knock you over, but it took him a while to get some of those bad habits out of his system. And he had a very good September. His last five starts, three and one, a 3.18 ERA, and he's allowed only three home runs. Home runs have been crippling to him over the last two years. 69 over a two-year period. Eckstein out in front of that change 74 miles an hour one and two. Yeah but I think you know what the Cardinals like about him is his intensity. He's willing to work with Duncan and La Russa and those guys to get better. I mean most big league pitchers that have been around for a long time don't want to do that. They're stubborn in their own game. Here Weaver felt like he needed a change and he worked hard to get better out here. One two pitch. Two and two. Lavin doing his thing. No runs on two hits. Fourteen and fifteen in his career during the postseason. Off the end of the bat, a weird bounce, and Delgado barehands it. Over to Glavin for the out. Who's coming up? Carlos Delgado for the Mets. Fourth inning. Game five. Pujols trying to do everything he can to help the Cardinals here tonight including figure out a way to jam the first base bag and the post below it down into the hole at first Pujols was working on it. We have a microphone in that base. Probably our fault. <laughs> so we'll just have to switch it out, I guess. It looks like the bottom of it is coming apart. So we could have a delay here, and that sure won't sit too well with Jeff Weaver as the ground screw tries to figure why not we try another base? How about that? So they're going to get another base. Logoed and all for this NLCS. They can get it out. Tomorrow night, it's game six of the NLCS from New York at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. Chris Carpenter, John Main, a rematch of game two that was won by the Cardinals, but both starters were long gone. <laughs> it's going to be dug up. <laughs> There's the rematch for game six, and now they've got, they can't get the base out, I don't think. Heard that old expression, trying to get to first base. <laughs> It finally got there. <laughs> so now they'll play with that 
all the while Weaver is on the mound and who should be coming to the plate Carlos Delgado the last guy he wants to face with his rhythm completely thrown off a guy who came in with a career 500 average against Weaver Delgado will lead off and will show you the last ground ball that he fielded off the bat of Eckstein fingertip with his bare hand now we'll get a new base and the play to end the third inning you know we were talking about next year and about Jeff Weaver where he might end up probably I'm sure that he wants to come back to the Cardinals the Cardinals would like to have a guy like Jeff Weaver back our congratulations from Fox to Lou Pinella who has been named the manager of the Chicago Cubs in a three year deal you know he'll do great and to me for any Cardinal fan watching I think the reaction should be uh oh not just because he's a very good manager and gets the most out of his clubs but because of his tight relationship with Alex Rodriguez of the New York Yankees I think Alex Rodriguez with the Yankees was not a fit it didn't work he's going to have to move on take his Hall of Fame career elsewhere Well, that went in there easy and because he and Pinella are so close from their days with the Mariners Pinella is a guy he calls during the course of the season when he's struggling he did this year in the second half of the season you could see him waving his no trade clause and the Yankees and Cubs coming together on a deal to put a rod on the north side of Chicago it is a fascinating point and we'll see what happens but or would he be welcomed with open arms the same obviously with Lou Pinella but that is a, a fascinating thing to think about over the next four or five months I would imagine that question and that possibility came up when they interviewed Lou Pinella because the Cubs need something and Alex Rodriguez would be something One ball no strikes as Weaver missed outside Delgado waits for another and takes a good breaking ball for strike one remember the first time he worked him with three fastballs inside and then two change ups this time two breaking balls to even the count your Delgado sometime in this sequence he's going to come back inside might be here it is and it's ball two. Molina is really setting up late. Not giving Delgado a chance to maybe peek and figure out where they're trying to pitch him. Back inside, three and one. Delgado leading off the fourth inning of this scoreless game five. Well, this is a game of adjustments, and it's not always the hitters that have to make the adjustments, it's the pitchers also. So obviously after the first couple games of this series seeing how well Delgado has gone the other way they've said we've got to pitch him in and tie him up. Here's a 3 1 that missed the outside corner and it's a leadoff walk the first walk handed out by Weaver. He didn't like the call and our HP player personality is David Wright who's coming to the plate right now. His childhood idol picked a good one Cal Ripken Jr. favorite movie Braveheart favorite actor Samuel L. Jackson a little Pulp Fiction headshot there and if he was not in baseball a police officer HP the computer is personal again and this is a good young personality to build a franchise around along with Jose Reyes the left side of this young infield for the Mets you know, David's dad a police officer right outside Norfolk Virginia mom and dad the proud parents of four boys David's the oldest first pitch is outside to right he struck out his first time with runners at the corners in the top of the first one for 14 in this series Wright gets under another one. Fly ball into left field. Preston Wilson is there, and it's one on one out. Godzo and I were talking about this about 10 minutes before game time. That the most common trait for hitters 
in approaching the ball is to open up too quickly, and that's what David Wright did on that slider away. When that front side leaves, you only have your arms left with which to hit. And David Wright miffed right there. Yeah, when David Wright's a successful hitter, he uses the other side of the field. He's done that all year. He needs to just try to get inside of one of those pitches, hit him in the gap, and he's going to be okay. Now it's Sean Green one on one out. You saw Wright leave the dugout. Ball one outside. I bet you can guess where David Wright is headed after that at bat. <laughs> First that, and then. Yep, I think a lot of that. I was going to say probably over to the video machine to look at yeah. tape of the at bat. These guys, Louis, you guys, at least your teammates, I'm not going to say you. As Green takes a strike, watch tape all day and after every at bat, go in and look at tape. Yeah, well, in Davis' defense, he's had a fantastic year and he is, he's a player with a lot of pride and he's been one of the main guys on this ball club. He wants to come out here and prove to not only the St. Louis Cardinals, but to the baseball world that he is a true star in this true young star in the major leagues. And he really is. One on one out, one ball, one strike on Green. Missing inside two and one. trying to deliver a jolt for the Mets out in front of it hooks it fair on the line into the corner it is interfered with by a fan down the right field line and that makes it second and third with one out it looked like that ball landed right on the line down the right side for a one out double John Green out in front of the breaking ball that ball initially looked like it was going to hook foul but it lands right smack on the line. Interfered with by a fan, so a grounds rule double. One more look. Definitely on the line as you see the chalk fly up. Now it's second and third one out. And Valentine at the plate. That's a great shot from the guys on the camera. It's that super slow-mo and seeing it on the line. Valentine the chance. Infield creeps in, and Valentin lines one over Pujols into right, and two runs are going to score. Valentin has delivered. Willie Randolph stayed with him, and Jose Valentin puts New York on top two zip. Sean Green out in front. He got a double. Jose Valentin out in front off the end of the bat just over the head of Albert Pujols and the Mets strike first here in the fourth so Valentin now has a four game hitting streak Chavez takes a strike. And some relief for Valentin who when he stepped to the plate for the first time on Saturday night was one for 16 in this postseason. Now Valentin at second one out and Chavez takes ball one. See and that's where Weaver has to be successful right there that last pitch that he threw to Chavez in off the plate. If that pitch that runs back out for him is continue to catch the plate. Those left handed hitters from the Mets are going to continue to pull that ball down the right field line like they like the last two guys have done. Double by Green a double by Valentin and now Chavez. Funny bounce and two holes to the bag two out. Over to third is Valentin with Glavin coming up. So one thing you can't afford to pitch around Valentin in that situation or even walk him intentionally because you have Indy Chavez the next hitter and if Chavez is hitting with the bases loaded the chances on doubling him with his speed are remote. That's why you almost had to pitch to Valentin and Jose delivered. Now it's Glavin with the runner at third. 
two out. Remember this inning started with the delay with a problem with the first base bag. Weaver standing there and what followed was a leadoff walk to Delgado. He comes around to score with Green on the double by Valentin. Glavin waits for the 0 1. The opposite way for Eckstein. The inning is over, but the Mets are on top. A walk and then two doubles. Preston Wilson first up for St. Louis and a swing and a miss on a changeup from Tom Glavin. 2 0, the Mets on top, bottom of the fourth inning. It will be Wilson, Pujols, and Encarnacion. Heart of the order got something done for the Mets, and the Cardinals tried to answer. Wilson fly to center his first time up. St. Louis with only two singles. X9 leading off in the first and Roland leading off in the second. Wilson hitting 200 in this LCS. Late on that swing. Looking for a changeup. Got an 86 mile an hour fastball. It's two and two. Well, Tom Clavin seldomly challenges you, and when he does, it looks like the pitch is 100 miles an hour. Wilson gets under it again and flies one into center field for Beltron. One out after the game last week, game one of this NLCS, Albert Pujols had this to say about the effort of Glavin. Keep in mind, Glavin went seven innings, allowed no runs on four hits, and got a 2 0 win. He wasn't good. He wasn't good at all. I think we hit the ball hard. We didn't get some breaks. I say he wasn't good at all. And then he went on to say some more and obviously saying that in front of microphones and writers and it happening in New York it's going to mushroom and blossom and it's something that was talked about for the next couple of days and now here they are again who holds fly to center his first time up. Well, I haven't had a great response. He said I have a ton of respect for Albert. That's what he said leading into yesterday. He's a great player. It's a great challenge when I face him individually. Off the end of the bat, a changeup from Glavin, and it is out of the reach of Delgado. He went on to say, if he truly didn't think I pitched well the other night, then I hope I do something to really impress him. That would be a good thing. And that would be Tom Glavin totally diffusing the situation, and in my mind, putting an end to any sort of a feud between these two proud athletes. Right. And I don't think Albert was trying to insinuate every, anything with Tom Glavin and the Mets. I think he was trying to fire up his own teammates. Here's the leader of your team. He wants them to know that they hit the ball well, but they didn't score any runs. And they're going to be facing these guys again like he is tonight. So he didn't want any kind of letdown from his ball club. Pujols was 0 for 2 with a walk. He's 0 for 1 tonight. And in the air to left field. Back at the track, at the wall. It is, it's a home run. And Pujols has just impressed Glavin. As everybody knows in baseball, the most indelible impressions are hits, not words. Didn't get all of it, but got enough of it. Just over the wall and left. The left field umpire, Jerry Lane, initially gave the safe call. 
which made you think that the ball was still in play. But it hit those billboards beyond the wall, and then eventually Jerry Lane signaled home run. Chavez knew it. Gets over that front wall. It's a home run here in St. Louis. Now the count's gone to three and one on Encarnacion. Back onto the field and Chavez. Quit playing it after it eventually was ruled a home run. Now a 3-1. Encarnacion pops it up. Out beyond short for Reyes. Two down, Roland coming up, and for more on Albert Pujols, let's go down to Ken Rosenthal. Joe, I spoke with Albert Pujols before the game, and I mentioned to him that Tony La Russa had said part of his difficulty with power might be that back leg, robbing him of his normal power. Albert Pujols was buying none of that. He said he didn't want to use that as an excuse, that even if he wasn't hitting home runs, he could contribute in other ways. That said, everyone in the Cardinals' dugout is acutely aware of his condition. When he sprints out of the batter's box, the guys yell, easy, take it easy. Thank you, Ken. He's down there, field level. Right by that dugout, and Roland takes the ball up and away. It's a two to one game. That's out in front here in the bottom of the fourth as Pujols gets his first RBI, let alone his first home run of this NLCS. 2 0 on Roland. Well, that's why he's a special player. He can make comments like that, but he definitely, when he takes the field, he leads by example. And that shows a lot of respect to the other players on the field. The 2-0 pitch with two out. Now it's 3-0. No stride. That's how powerful he is. Up on the, the left foot, on the toes of the left foot, and just puts his heel back down. There's no stride to Albert Poole's swing. A four-pitch walk with two out. We had a chance during the last break to talk to Cardinal manager Tony La Russa. Well, Tony La Russa, we are seeing somewhat a rematch of what happened in game one. Reaver did give up the two doubles. Seems like he's brought his good stuff, and Glavin looks like he's going to be a handful for you guys again tonight. Well, I agree. I think Weaver did it real well. You know, he walked, he had a ball, hit the foul line, and then a nice piece of hitting by Valentin. But, uh, we just got to solve Glavin if we want to have a chance to win the game. Yeah, and last question, what is your approach against Glavin tonight, and are your guys carrying through on that so far? Well, I mean, I don't want you know, we got a game to go. They may have scouts listening, so, you know, we've got a better idea. The results aren't there yet. I think we'll break through. All right, thanks, Tony. They did break through with a home run by Pujols, a little more guarded tonight than he was two nights ago. As Edmonds... Fouls the first one away as this crowd, for one of the few times since this series has moved to St. Louis, is really into it, knowing that this important game five is in the middle innings. And the Mets are out in front by one. Yeah, if the Cardinals play in this ballpark after tonight, they'll be in the World Series. Mets have scored in 10 innings, and the Cardinals have come right back in their next at bat and scored seven times, and that includes here in the fourth inning of game five. In LCS play, best of seven, they went to that in 1985 when a series has been tied 2-2. The winner of game five has gone on to win six of the last seven. Series. That is what is on the line right now as the count goes to two and one on Edmonds. Two home runs in this series for the Cardinal center fielder. referred to a 2-0 or a 3-1 pitch as a free swing. So a free swing for Jim Edmonds. 
Try to choose one good power the other way. Or pull a base hit through the right side. Roland will turn but hold, and it's two on with two out. Scott Rowland probably could have made it to third base, but you do not want to take that chance with two outs. Edmonds out in front, but finds a hole. And you guys both talked about the approach of the Cardinal hitters. I can understand Tony La Russa being guarded about what they're trying to do tonight against Lavin. But for the most part coming in, they wanted to try to take Lavin the other way. Edmonds pulling a base hit through the right side. Pujols pulling a home run down the left field line. Belliard with a chance, two on, two out. To the opposite way, base hit. Here comes Roland. Here's the throw by Green. This game is tied. It looked to me like Belliard went up looking for something away was going away and found the hole like Edmonds did. You could see the head. Head on that outside change up trickling through to right field and Roland scores to tie it up. And that's how you have to approach Tom Glavin. You have to play small ball with him because if you try to hit home runs off of him, aside from Albert Pujols, who's one of the best power hitters in the game, you're not going to have success against him. So you have to piece together walks, base hits to try to manufacture runs like they're doing right here in this fourth inning. Rick Peterson the pitching coach out to visit. And Molina will be the hitter with first and third two out. Mets got two and the Cardinals came back with two and a chance for more. Here's a look from center field. Watch the head of Belliard. Actually it's not on the pitch as much as I thought it was. The hands show he's going the other way, but the head wasn't zeroed in on that pitch low and away. Molina, ball one. Yadier Molina hitting 500 this postseason with runners in scoring position. with a pitcher Weaver on deck. See if Glavin gives in to the number eight hitter with a pitcher next. Fastball right down the middle, two and one. That tells you Glavin is not pitching around Yadier Molina. Missed on the corner, three and one. Caught the corner, and Molina has to come back. On the 2 0 pitch, it was a fastball on the outside part. But with the count three balls and a strike the change up just just gets the outside corner. Well outside according to Fox tracks and Molina still upset with Jeff Kellogg the home plate umpire now back in on a three two pitch. Runner at first belly iron will go. That's what happens when a guy like Lavin throws a pitch out there, gets it called a strike. Now the hitter knows that, so he's reaching out there. That might have been ball four, but the hitter has to, he kept in his mind what pitch he got called before for a strike, and he ends up swinging at a bad, at a bad pitch. Another 3-2. That'll load him up. Two 
two walks and three hits in the inning but now for St. Louis it's up to Jeff Weaver their pitcher. We talked about it in game one Weaver can swing the bat he had a hit his first time up against Glavitt. Second hit of the game for the Cardinals at Shea Stadium. First runs Glavin has allowed this postseason. Weaver takes the ball. Back in game one. First time up. Weaver a base hit to right. Two and one. Thirty five pitch inning for Glavin so far. Chad Bradford, the submarine style right hander, will crank it up. is tied 2 2 after four Albert Pujols finally broke through made it 2 1 Cardinals have tied it back after this from your local Fox station game summary brought to you by Verizon Wireless Valentine with a two run double for the Mets in the top of the fourth Lavin finally gave up two runs he still just allowed two runs in 17 innings pitch this postseason and Pujols it's his first home run gets his first RBI to get the scoring started for the Cardinals. They added another it's a 2 2 game and Reyes after the first pitch. Pops it in the air to Preston Wilson one out. Paul Loduca will be the hitter. 0 for 2. By the way for Reyes a big key for the Mets getting on base using his leg 64 steals came into this game during the postseason hitting 200 leading off innings. He has led off three different innings tonight has one hit in those three at bats. Most leadoff hitters are very patient at the plate. He's not your typical leadoff hitter. He's very aggressive. And if he sees that first pitch he likes he swings after it like he did in his last at bat. Randy Flores getting loose. For St. Louis in case something brews with Beltron and Delgado looming. Strike two on Laduca. All robbed of a hit on a diving stop by Eckstein his first time up fly to center. Back in the third trying to get on in front of Beltron. Here in the fifth inning. It was Loduca, guys getting on base with two out in the sixth inning of game one with a chopper through the left side. With Weaver rolling and actually to that point even out pitching Tom Glavin in game one and dealt rather Beltron stepped up after the base hit by Loduca and hit a blast off the scoreboard and right the only scoring of the night. Ball one. Yeah, initially everyone thought that that was just an innocent two out hit. But it turned out that Paul Laduca scored the first run of this series in a game won by the Mets 2 0. Two and two.
wonder if you're Tony La Russa and Dave Duncan if the decision comes as to whether to go get Weaver and bring in Flores if Loduca reaches here. Turns Beltron around. With Delgado the left handed hitting first baseman to follow. Line drive into right field is a fair ball. Playing it off the wall is Encarnacion. It's a single for Loduca, his first hit of the night, and now we'll see what Larusa wants to do. That is just terrific hitting by a good hitter with two strikes going away. Look at his head right down on the ball. I was going to say Joe it, it would appear to me that whether you bring Flores in now depends on whether Laduca gets on if Laduca gets on I thought Tony La Russa would make the move but evidently not so the hole open again on the right side of the infield Beltron with one on one out takes a ball it was in the fifth inning in game four when the Mets and the power of this Mets lineup went to work and in game four combined that's what this group did Beltron Delgado and Wright one on one out here and a shot into right field and Carnacion to his left makes the play two out. So La Russa allows Weaver to pitch to Beltron. It looked like a changeup. Hit hard in the right field. And the Cardinals dodged a bullet there. They really did. I mean, that was a good pitch for Beltron to hit. They're very lucky that he didn't elevate that ball. Now Molina goes out to talk. You know, the dugout sent him out there, and we'll see. How confident La Russa is with Weaver against Delgado again coming in a career 500 hitter against Jeff Weaver is Carlos Delgado. So now you're committed to because Tony La Russa is allowing Weaver to pitch to Delgado. Flores has put his jacket back on so he's not pitching to Delgado but Weaver will pitch to right if Delgado gets on. Outside ball one. This is by far the biggest at bat to this point tonight. It might be for the game as we make our way through it. Weaver and Delgado. And Weaver has to show Delgado in, but he has to be very careful if he comes in that he comes in off the plate. Coming inside, as you can see, Molina setting up inside. It up on the infield. Larusa stayed with Weaver, and Weaver rewards the faith. Halfway through game number five, Cardinals have the top of the order coming up in a 2 2 game. Top of the order for St. Louis here in the fifth inning. What a job Jeff Weaver did getting around the hit by Loduca in the top of this fifth, getting Beltron and Delgado. And now Eckstein shows punt and floats one over the head of Reyes for a leadoff hit. Watch David Eckstein show punt briefly, and then he brings the hands back in time. He's jammed with it, and Reyes almost makes the play. Showing the punt, jam with the pitch, just by the outstretched glove of Reyes. Missed it by about six inches. That ball carried a little farther than Reyes thought coming off the bat. And now Bradford gets loose as the leadoff man is on for St. Louis. Preston Wilson. 0 for 2 digs in. No bun here. Ball one.
No bunt because of that guy on deck. Wilson has flied to center twice. It's 17 home runs during the regular season. Splitting his time between Houston and St. Louis. Does not have an RBI this postseason. Wilson into right center field. Green will turn and run, and so will Eckstein. Digging for third. All the way around. St. Louis up 3 2. Fastball is high, and Preston Wilson going the other way. Out over the plate. Joe, you talked about it in the first inning, about Tommy Clavin being up with everything for the most part. That's been the difference tonight in, in game one. He's high with a lot of his pitches tonight, and Wilson just took advantage of a high fastball. And Preston Wilson may have knocked Clavin out of this game. Loduka out to talk. Bradford getting loose in a hurry. And Preston Wilson gets his first RBI of this postseason now. Five out of 20. And they'll walk Pujols with first base open. Nobody out. And Carnacion coming up. And you have to believe Bradford will face him with two on and nobody out. Well, for a lot of reasons. We talked about Glavin being up in the strike zone. But primarily Bradford's a ground ball pitcher and you need the double play. That could change things around from Tony LaRusso's standpoint. You could have Encarnacion run for rolling. So a lot of things could happen after the walk to Pujols. That'll put two on and that'll bring Willie Randolph out of the dugout and that will send Glavin to the showers. And with the showers all day yesterday the big news was Glavin would get his extra day of rest pitching on normal rest. The Cardinals have knocked him out here in the fifth inning of game five. Chad Bradford who will pitch to Encarnacion and Encarnacion will talk to Jose Oquendo giving him the signs with two on and nobody out. I think I think you certainly can't argue with the bun in this situation if you do move the runners over second and third the Mets are not going to walk Scott Rowland to get to Jim Edmonds the left hander plus the ball down in the strike zone is easier to bunt. Bradford very difficult to hit the ball in the air against. Encarnacion drops it down foul. Good speed with the lead runner Preston Wilson at second. Pujols has the tender right hamstring but still is running around OK. And Encarnacion trying to advance those two runners up to second and third. the hole 0 and 2. And Tony La Russa with a tilt of his head frustrated that Encarnacion couldn't get the bunt down and now we'll see if the Cardinals keep it on with two strikes. I don't think so. Not with a cleanup hitter. I think after the first pitch Okendo told him square around a little bit earlier because this is a tough guy to bunt against when he's coming sidearm at that angle to a right handed hitter. 
And Encarnacion floats one into right for a hit. That'll load the bases. Green drops it, but everybody stays put. So Encarnacion does one better than dropping down a sacrifice bunt. Floats a hit into right. Now sometimes the lack of fundamental play or good fundamental baseball ends up in your favor. Twice he tried to bunt, foul two off, and now pokes one into right field. Jose Oquendo, the third base coach, had to hold Preston Wilson, even though Green dropped the ball, but with nobody out, no way to try to send it. Bottom of the fifth, 3 2 St. Louis, and a chance for a big inning. As Pedro Feliciano, a lefty, gets ready for Edmonds. He's on deck. Roland is at the plate. And he rips one down the left field line foul. The controversy with Roland and Larusa, his manager, they have not talked since Roland was not in the lineup in game two. Roland bothered by that sore left shoulder. Larusa went to Spezio in game two. Roland wasn't happy about it. The two haven't spoken. But in the lineup tonight because Glavin was starting, now has to try and hit the right hander Bradford with the bases loaded and nobody out here in the fifth. The hole 0 and 2. Well, this is where Scott Rowland has to do exactly what Juan Encarnacion did try to stay inside that ball and put it in play and try to get something in the air out in the outfield, although it's a tough pitcher because he likes to keep the ball down. Staying inside on Roland and Scott out in front of it again. Last Grand Slam hit in the postseason was Reggie Sanders in the division series of last year. Three Grand Slams in their postseason history. Bradford wants a new baseball. The Mets in their half of the sixth will have Wright, Green, and Valentin. They'll be trailing by at least one. Looking ahead to tomorrow night, the Cardinals have their ace, Chris Carpenter, on the mound against John Maine. That's in New York. Roland strikes out, and Bradford carved him up. One away and a big strikeout for New York with the bases loaded. Well, one of the ways to counter what Encarnacion did was to stay inside, and that's what Bradford does. Outstanding 0-2 pitch to get rolling. He didn't want to, but he did. Now another meeting on the mound with Loduca and Bradford, and you have to expect to see Feliciano come out of that bullpen. Edmonds is the hitter. Bases loaded, one out. And here comes Willie Randolph. You almost have to do this. That's why Feliciano's up. Bradford goes a third of an inning, strikes out one, allows a hit. And the bases are loaded, one out, and Edmonds will be the hitter against Feliciano. Cardinals leading, fifth inning. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Bradford now takes his seat. And Pedro Feliciano takes over. The left-hander to deal with Edmonds, who hit 156 against left-handed pitching this season. Second lowest average in baseball. He did homer two nights ago in game four against Oliver Perez a lefty
Bases loaded, one out. Ball one. Well, he came very close there to giving the Cardinals a free run. Taking all the way it looked like one ball one strike. Pedro Feliciano really matured this year and had a terrific season coming out of the bullpen for Willie Randolph. A one one pitch. Edmonds grounds to first Delgado to the plate out no other play. Two out now and it's still a one run game. Good play by Delgado realizing he can't get two by going to second very deliberate coming home. You can see Preston Wilson trying to take Loduka out of the play. Not only do base runners try to take second baseman and shortstop out of a double play but watch Wilson come sliding in to try to nip Loduka. But a good play by Delgado. Remember this Mets bullpen had the best ERA in the National League this season. They're showing what they can do here in the fifth inning against the Cardinals. Now Belliard takes just high ball one. Feliciano seven and two a two point oh nine ERA during the regular season. Belliard pops it down the right side. It's a foul ball and out of play. Steve Traxel is on the list and in the bullpen tonight for the Mets. And may stay in the bullpen for the Mets the rest of this series. Belliard tied the game with a single last in it. Roberto Hernandez getting loose. Ronnie Belliard hits it in the air to left field. Chavez back. What a job by this Mets bullpen. The Cardinals get the lead, but it could have been much, much more without Bradford and Feliciano. 3 2, St. Louis after five. And Weaver goes back to work. Thought he'd have a big cushion with which to work. Instead, it's one run. As David Wright is first up, 0 for 2, and now 1 for 15 in this series. Sean Green will follow. And then Valentin. It's 0 and 2. By right and a breaking ball that stayed up, and it's still 0 2. Stayed up and over the plate. A real mistake that Weaver got away with. Wright has struck out, flight out, and he takes ball one. Weaver will do that occasionally. He'll drop down a little bit further sidearm to try to throw the hitter off balance. And that is a foul tip to keep the count one and two. This series tied two games apiece. St. Louis leading by a run in the top of the sixth inning with Weaver still on the mound. the end of the bat you got to believe they're going to continue to pitch right away 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 until he shows them that he's going to hit that ball to right center seventy fifth pitch of the night for Weaver and it's tapped foul at the plate. 
Cardinals have left the bases loaded each of the last two innings. Tied it with two in the fourth. Took the lead with one in the fifth. And Flores is still moving around out in that bullpen, not throwing yet. He has warmed up once. Still one and two. And yeah, Weaver continues to just pitch away, show him in once in a while just to give him a different look, but he's going to continue to go out there. Ninth pitch of this at bat. Drop down again, missing with it, two and two. Well, Weaver has made some tough pitches on David Wright in this at bat. That pitch outside. Now a full count. Good battle here put on by David Wright after falling in the hole in a blink. Full count. You got Green on deck. Flores is not throwing in the bullpen. To third, tough play, rolling. One away. The bullpen for the Mets in the fifth inning. Bradford struck out Roland for the first out with the bases loaded. Feliciano gets Edmonds on the force at the plate. And then Belliard and a ball off the end of the bat. That keeps New York in this game. No run scoring against that bullpen in over 11 straight innings now. The name at the front of that list, Darren Oliver, with his six shutout innings two nights ago. In relief of Traxel, 1 0 pitch, 2 0 on green. Valentin has the RBIs tonight for the Mets with a two run double. Weaver and Green play chicken and Weaver steps off first. Change up and Green way out in front. The old 2 0 change up. Weaver tried to bust Green inside with the first two fastballs, and then with Sean looking for the fastball, Weaver changes up and has him way out in front. Once you do that, once you show that change up when you're behind in the count, that reestablishes the fastball. Green is jammed a bit. Fouls it away. Two and two. Talk about the velocity difference. A 78 mile an hour change and a 91 mile an hour fastball. Change up. Ground ball to first. Pujols. Weaver, two out. Sometimes you kind of guess with the pitcher. And I would imagine Pujols leaning toward the line, looking for the changeup. Weaver threw it, and Pujols made the play. Nicely done. And not only that, Tim, but Albert Pujols plays a very deep first base. As you saw there yeah. on the replay, his feet are standing on the, on the cut of the grass. Mm -hmm. Gives him a better chance on a ball head like that. Now Valentin who doubled literally on the line his last time up to score two. Breaking ball for a strike. The lead gave Tom Glavin. A little breathing room in the bottom of the fourth the Cardinals came back to tie it. Took the lead in the bottom of the fifth. Weaver has done the rest. Here you see Albert Pujols playing a lot deeper than normal first basements. 
made a great play where if the first base was playing at regular depth, that ball may get by him. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Valentin hooks it to first foul. Strike two. You can watch the World Series on Fox. It starts on Saturday, and it's your duty, Judy. Saturday night in Detroit. Will it be Cardinals and Tigers and the Mets and the Tigers? Valentin fouls it back. You know, when you think about the layoff that the Tigers have had and some of the young arms that they have worked all year long, a little extra break, they say, well, doesn't it kill their momentum? Well, maybe on some level, but guys like Zumaya and Rodney and Bonderman and Verlander get that extra rest. Two and two, and these are young pitchers who throw the ball through a wall who have a chance to rebuild a little bit here at the end of a long season. Well, Detroit may lose to either one of these teams, but I don't think anything's going to stop the momentum of that town and that team. But their starters have done this postseason. Inside, and now a full count on Valentin. And don't let that kid you. Those guys are very excited and waiting for, they've been waiting for a World Series for a while. So Detroit is anxious and waiting for that team to come in. A team that lost 119 games three years ago. An American League record. That misses the outside corner for a two out walk and the tying run is on for New York. Right now is tied two games apiece. Tomorrow night game six eight o'clock Eastern five Pacific. Here's Andy Chavez one on two out. Ball one. This is a big out right here. Tony La Russa does not want to go to his bullpen right now with Randy Flores one of his two left handers because if he does he'll have to pinch hit for him since the Cardinal pitcher spot is up in the bottom of the sixth inning the second spot up that's foul it will be Molina then Weaver's spot then Eckstein and Josh Hancock and Randy Flores one guy pitching with confidence one guy without Getting loose and Roberto Hernandez getting loose for the Mets and here comes Dave Duncan to buy those guys in the bullpen a little time. Michael Tucker is already in the on deck circle. Left handed hitting outfielder. So Flores is the one that concentrates on cranking it up as fast as he can in the pen. And, and if you bring Flores in you don't want to make a double switch. So if you don't make a double switch Flores even if he's successful could pitch to one left handed hitter and I think Tony La Russa wants more out of Flores than just pitching to one hitter. So Indy Chavez is a key out whether the Mets score or not. Chavez four home runs during the regular season. Has doubled tonight and grounded out. One and two. Good breaking ball from Weaver. Belliard. What a night for Jeff Weaver. Three two St. Louis leading into the bottom of the sixth. Pedro Feliciano who did a great job for the Mets in the bottom of the fifth inning starts the sixth fresh and has Yadier Molina first up. Pinch hitter Chris Duncan in the on deck circle and then back to the top Eckstein. 3 2 St. Louis on top of the Mets and the Caps 2 0 on Molina. Weaver it appears is finished and he could not have pitched any better. Now Josh Kinney 
gets loose for St. Louis as Molina flies one into left center. Beltron over to get it, one out. Our Travelers in game box score for the Cardinals. Eckstein has been on base with a couple of hits. Preston Wilson, the RBI double, is the difference right now. Pujols a solo home run to get the scoring started, and the other RBI belongs to Belliard at the bottom. Here's Duncan for Weaver. Six innings, two runs, six hits, two walks, a strikeout. Can only be the winner if he gets a decision. Yeah, this is an odd choice putting Chris Duncan up there now. Pedro Feliciano, one of the toughest left handers in the National League against left handed hitters, and you can see the numbers of Duncan paltry on the season. One ball, one strike. I think Taguchi is also one of his guys off the bench, but he's a better defensive outfielder. And if this game stays close, he's going to want him out on the field in the eighth or ninth inning. Another option would be Miles, but he's really the only backup middle infielder. And then Spezio, but leading in the sixth inning. He wants to keep Spezio for that right spot late in the game. Right. There are the numbers for Weaver 95 pitches and he outpitched Tom Glavin tonight. Two and two on Duncan. Getting back to Weaver I think the thing that made him successful tonight was he was able to establish his fastball in and keep hitters like Delgado and Beltron from getting good passes at, at that inside pitch. Twenty two home runs during the regular season for Duncan. Figure is number two on the all time Cardinal list for rookies. The top spot belongs to Pujols, who hit 37 back in 2001 as the rookie of the year. Three two pitch. That is ripped in the air to right field, down the line, and Duncan off the bench doubles the lead. Dave Duncan waiting to greet him when he got to the top step of the dugout. What must be going through Dave's mind watching his son tour the bases here in the postseason? Who said that was an odd choice? <laughs> <laughs> Hanging breaking ball to Duncan on a 3 2 count right in the middle of the plate. Only two homers all year against left handed pitching. Wow. Stein takes a breaking ball from Feliciano. It's 0 and 2. There's the smile on Dave Duncan's face. Still 0 and 2 on Eckstein. Well, I tell you, Dave's not going to show a lot of emotion, but he's got to be a proud dad right now. One for 12 this postseason was Duncan prior to that swing on a 3 2 pitch. Dave Duncan could not hold that smile back, could he? <laughs> would be in pie. He would not be human. That's right. If he did. Here's another son, Shelley, who plays in the Yankee organization. 0 2 pitch. Eckstein hits it in the air to left, right at Chavez. Two out. Chris goes deep. And Dave. Looks at his longtime friend Tony LaRussa. And you at home can give this smile. It's been a big night for Dave Duncan when you consider what Jeff Weaver has done on the mound and the turnaround he's made under his tutelage. And what his son just did, making it 4 2. He won't be able to sit for a while. No. Yeah. 
In at the knees, one ball, one strike. The Mets in the seventh inning will have a pinch hitter, then Reyes and Loduca. Anybody gets on, Beltron. Important for Feliciano to keep it a two run game. The 1 1. Looked like Wells went. He did not, according to Gary Darling. It's 2 and 1. Funny thing uh, with Loduca, it looked like Loduca wanted the fastball to Duncan, and Feliciano shook him off. Shook him off a couple of times. Came back with a breaking ball, and Duncan handled the rest. Wilson pops it into shallow center. Valentin is out to get it, and the inning is over. A home run by Chris Duncan. It's 4-2 St. Louis. Seventh inning now, game five. Back after this from your local Fox station. Seventh inning, game five. St. Louis on top, 4-2, trying to take a 3-2 series lead to New York. And Josh Kenny, the 27-year-old rookie, takes over. There are the numbers in the postseason. Four games, four innings, one hit, and very good against left-handed hitters. He deals with Michael Tucker, the pinch hitter, trying to get it started for the Mets. And he's in the hole on two. For the Mets, if they are going to turn this score around, it will be the veterans for Willie Randolph and for the Cardinals. If they're going to hang on to this lead, it'll be the kids pitching for Tony La Russa. Tucker strikes out. Three breaking balls to Michael Tucker from Josh Kinney. Two for call strikes, and then Michael could not hold up on the third one and that's his strikeout pitch right there yeah. that slider at the back leg that's one of the toughest pitches for a left handed hitter to to try to make contact with normally swing over that pitch and Tucker did that trying to hold up Jose Reyes now one for three tonight single his first time up shows bunt was taken and took ball one. Reyes now, Loduca on deck. And Beltron waiting in the wings. There's a strike. You think about this series as it goes forward. We know there will be a game six tomorrow night in New York, and the Cardinals will have the reigning Cy Young Award winner on the mound, Chris Carpenter, against John Main, the young right hand. Reyes hits one foul down the right field line, strike two. John Main has pitched well this season with six and five good ERA 3.6 but so far in the postseason he'll make his third start he has no record and he has not worked more than four and a third innings in either start look for that back leg breaking ball again from Kenny Reyes is gone. He didn't throw it down and in, but he got it down enough, and Reyes is gone. So Kenny has struck out the first two, and now Loduca. With Flores again getting loose for the Cardinals in their bullpen. Loduca one for three. Strike one. How about this kid? Not phased at all by the stage that October baseball provides, and a guy who was pitching for an independent league team took forever to get to the big leagues through the minor league system, and here he is at 27, a rookie, not even a factor in the Cardinal bullpen until the last two months. Belliard, Kenny, a one-two-three-seventh time to stretch. Cardinal fans having fun. Up 4 2. One thing Willie Randolph has been able to do to this point because of the pitching of Glavin and Bradford and Feliciano. 
is he can for the most part at least as it's shaping up right now scratch one more game off the list where Darren Oliver might have pitched. So with John Main going tomorrow night Oliver's in play and if there is a game seven Oliver might be in line for the start. Ken Rosenthal said he has not made a start since August 5th of 2004. Off the end of the bat and short hop by Valentin, one out. Pujols one for three. He warmed up today. He threw on the side two days ago. And he appears to be feeling better and better, and we'll get more on that from Ken Rosenthal, who is standing by. Ken. Joe, El Duque isn't eligible to pitch in the NLCS, but he is aiming to make it back in the World Series. He threw 62 pitches off the mound today, then simulated fielding bunts and grounders in the outfield. Manager Willie Randolph says it's still a long shot in his mind that El Duque will be back, but El Duque is aiming to go. He told me if the manager gives, referring to a possible World Series start, I will take. All right, thank you, Ken. And when you look at the way he was moving around in the bullpen and fielding his position today, he looks a lot farther along and closer to being ready than Cliff Floyd who we saw jogging around in the outfield a big bat not in this lineup for the Mets and so far after making the start in game one we haven't seen him since one ball two strikes on Encarnacion who's one for three Floyd is out with a strained left Achilles Encarnacion fouls it. How many hands had a chance at that ball and nobody came up with it. Line them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hernandez got Pujols. Has Encarnacion set up. Here in the last few innings the big frame the way it looks right now will happen in the top of the eighth. At least a two run lead for St. Louis with Beltron Delgado and Wright. The big three the scheduled hitters that's foul. That's why it was important for Kenny to retire the Mets in order. Now the way it's set up with Beltron leading off. Then Kenny pitches to Beltron, and then your left hander is ready for Delgado if Beltron gets on. If not, Kenny will pitch to Delgado. That at least is how you think Tony La Russa is thinking about the big two and big three with David Wright. Pretty good pitch. Hernandez does not get the call, and it's a full count. Boy, that's a good pitch. Three balls, two strikes. And Carnacion takes a walk. And now Scott Rowland will be the hitter. You could say, well, Rowland didn't look good his last time up against Bradford he may be challenged here with his bad left shoulder against Hernandez that's one side of it but Tony La Russa wants rolling in the game now for his glove if he gets some offense out of him that would be for La Russa even better we talked about it in game one the ball down from the waist to the knees is easier for Roland to handle than the ball above the belt. That's because of his left shoulder receiving a cortisone shot in it eight days ago. So anytime he has to elevate that shoulder, it is not good news for Roland or the Cardinals. On the inside corner, strike one. 95 miles per hour from Hernandez who came from the Pirates with Oliver Perez for Xavier Nady at the deadline. Oh and two. Yeah, you can see right there that's the pitch that ties rolling up. 
and the one he just cannot turn on because of that injured left shoulder. You know, that ball's about belt high or so. Yeah, there's no doubt when Scott Rowland is healthy, he hits that ball a long way. Yeah. The last 19 games hitting 182, one home run. Had a good year going until the final month and a half. Ended up hitting 22 home runs, 95 RBIs. But his average, which was above 300 all year, dropped to 296 down the stretch. Pop up on the left side of the infield for David Wright. Two out. And Jim Edmonds will bat. Edmonds came up his last time with the bases loaded and one out, facing Feliciano and bounced into a force out at the plate when he hit it to Delgado at first. Ball one. Thirteen career postseason home runs. He takes ball two. Late local news is coming up. It is 10 o'clock here in the Midwest, 11 o'clock back east. Joe Buck, Tim McCarver, Luis Gonzalez, Ken Rosenthal, producer Pete Macheska, director Bill Webb. A cast of thousands from St. Louis. On our way to New York tonight. That gets away and sends Encarnacion to second. And now I would think Willie Randolph will go ahead and walk Jim Edmonds to pitch to the right-handed hitter, Belliard. I think Willie had that in mind. But then with the 3 0 pitch, talking to Laduca, yep, four fingers put him on. It'll be two on with two out. Second intentional pass handed out tonight by the Mets. Glavin walked Pujols earlier. And now Belliard. Ronnie one for three with an RBI single back in the fourth. Good speed on for the Cardinals. Two on, two out. And Belliard chops to David Wright on the high hop to the bag. The force out. And here we go into the eighth inning. The big bats coming up. Beltron, Delgado, and Wright. St. Louis up 4 2. Eighth inning now. 4 2 St. Louis out in front. And Josh Kenny back to work. He had a perfect seventh inning. Beltron, Delgado, and Wright. The big chance for the Mets, and a breaking ball is in for a strike to Beltron. Well that's one of two different sliders that he throws. He throws that one just for a strike and his strikeout pitch is the one down and into the left handers. There's the pitch and it's taken for ball one one and one key batter for Kenny to determine whether Kenny stays in to pitch to Delgado. I would think that if he gets Beltron out Randy Flores will not be in the game but if Beltron gets on Flores is in the game definitely. The 1 1. Strike two. The rain out last night not only gave Glavin an extra day rest, it obviously gave it to Weaver. And for the Mets bats, after busting out in game four, they had to wait another day. You know that these hitters wanted to get right back out there and play last night. They had to wait. And this Mets offense is quiet again. This is a team that's built to pound the ball and score a lot of runs. 
They have an aging pitching staff and they need to score runs. They held it two runs on six hits tonight. And that misses for ball two. Twelve runs on 14 hits on Sunday night for the Mets. Bell trying to be part of that with two home runs. Now it's a full count. Delgado next. Beltron strikes out. Yet another breaking ball from Josh Kinney. His third strikeout. And now that allows him with the two run lead to pitch to Delgado. Because if Delgado gets on, then you want Kinney to pitch to right. Man on the mound Josh Kenny did not make his major league debut until July 3rd pitched for a while and went back down. Called back up and even then wasn't a huge part of the bullpen. But the final month when Isringhausen went down and everybody moved up a slot. Wainwright became the closer looper his setup man and Kenny right there with him. That's when Josh Kenny showed Tony La Russa what he could do. Now he's showing the Mets what he can do and the count evens one and one. Well he's definitely one of those players that has taken full advantage of an opportunity especially here in postseason play to show not only him but the baseball world what what he can do. Five years in the minor league system after pitching an independent baseball here in the St. Louis area. One one pitch. One and two on Delgado. Two and two. Adam Wainwright, the closer for St. Louis. Ripped into the corner, hooking. It is a foul ball. One of the reasons Kenny is so successful is breaking ball is tightly wrapped even when it's up. Delgado out in front here and misses a double or an extra base hit by about a foot. Now Molina out to chat with Kenny. Pierre Momota getting loose for the Mets. Almost hit Delgado with that breaking ball full count. Like Delgado saw the ball coming in and almost put his right leg in harm's way. Taking one for the team. The two hitting stars for the Mets from game four Beltron and Delgado are a combined one for six against Weaver and Kinney here in game five up the middle 
Belliard has no play. So far into the outfield grass that Delgado beats the play easily, and now the tying run will come to the plate for the Mets in the person of David Wright. Belliard about 15 to 20 feet off the infield cutout. So Delgado, who is not a fast runner, getting a rare infield hit. So now the home plate umpire Jeff Kellogg goes out to check the baseball and gives Kinney a new one. And David Wright. The Mets have been waiting on David Wright to find his stroke. He homered in game four but he is one for 16 in this NLCS. And now Adam Wainwright joins Randy Flores for the Cardinals in their pen. Eilman joins Guillermo Mota. Strike one. David Wright with 26 home runs during the regular season. Hit 311. Ball one. with a great swing at that pitch but he's in the hole one and two that was a fat fastball and right fouls it back we would love to have that one back yeah, and that's what happens when you're not going good you miss those pitches when you're swinging the bat well those are the ones that you square up and hit them for home runs or doubles in the gap one ball two strikes one on one out tying run at the plate for the Mets. Two and two. Along with having a great arm it should be obvious by now in this series that Molina is outstanding at blocking balls in the dirt. Right here, they're probably hoping they can get right to roll over again on a ground ball on one of those sliders down and away. And it's ripped down into the corner. That ball is going to take a hop, bang off the wall. Delgado will make it to third on a double by David Wright. And so now here are the Mets with a single, a double, and a chance here in the eighth. Let's take a look at the sequence. Kenny to David Wright. The breaking ball for a strike. Breaking ball misses outside. And this is the pitch Wright wishes he had back. But you know what? He gets it back. Slider hooked, curled down the line for a double. Puts Wright at second base, representing the potential tying run. Kenny goes an inning and a third and leaves with runners on at second and third. Only one out. And Flores coming in for Sean Green. This week, Fox NFL Sunday returns with a double header as the Carolina Panthers take on Cincinnati at Cincinnati against Carson Palmer and the Bengals. Then Clinton Portis and the Redskins battle Peyton Manning and the Colts or other regional action. It all begins this week with America's number one pregame show at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, right here on Fox. Sean Green is the hitter, second and third. The Mets are a well-placed base hit away from tying this game. 4-2 St. Louis, top of the eighth. And Randy Flores takes over. Fastball for a strike. Starts green off with the fastball. Sean thought it was inside. May have had a point. Up and in, one ball, one strike. 
Flores, a 31 year old left hander who also bounced around in his career before settling in with the Cardinals last season. Green flies one into center field. Edmonds is on the move, makes the catch, and the runners hold. Got a late break and recovered. Two down. Delgado did not retreat to the bag quickly enough. However, with Edmonds catching the ball where he caught it, I don't think Carlos is going to have a chance to score anyway. No way can you take that chance. Delgado at third. Watch him break toward home first. Now he doesn't get back in time. He doesn't know what to do. And Edmonds' throw makes the point moot because he went back to third too late. But there's no way to challenge Edmonds' arm when he's that shallow anyway. Here Adam comes Wainwright. Excuse Wainwright will take over with Belliard exiting in a double switch. Aaron Miles will take second base. Valentin coming up, second and third, two out. Top of the eighth inning, the Mets with second and third, two out now. Aaron Miles is in the game at second base, takes over for Belliard, bats ninth. The focus is on Adam Wainwright, the 25 year old now closer, who's finishing off his first full year in the big leagues. Valentin up, second and third, two out, a chance for the Mets to tie it with a hit. Tailing fastball for a strike. Some combination for Wainwright. Excellent fastball and as good a curve for a short reliever as there is in the National League. Cardinal pitching this postseason. Runners in scoring position, two outs. The opponents 0 for 30. There's the hook, and it doesn't hook. One ball, one strike. Cliff Floyd with a bat in his hands. On deck is Chavez. Good curveball from Wainwright. Valentin trying to quiet this crowd. Wainwright did it. Got off the rubber, took a moment. Wet the fingers on his pitching hand if he was able. Space is open. Andy Chavez on deck. Valentin grounds it foul. Broke his bat in the process. Omar Manaya, the general manager, saw his ace, Pedro Martinez, injured down the stretch from a bad calf to rotator cuff surgery. Saw El Duque go down before the division series, trying to patch together a pitching rotation. Right now, trying to come from behind in game five with a series tied 2 2.
getting over. This game gets into the bottom of the eighth inning. It will be Molina, Miles, and Eckstein against Guillermo Mota, who's been busy this postseason. He's been in six of the eight games now for the Mets, and the first pitch inside ball one. Ball one strike. The bullpen in the top of the eighth inning for St. Louis. A job by Flores to get green with second and third one out. And then Wainwright striking out Valentin to end the threat. Molina pops it up and it's out of play. Strike two. Cardinals toyed with the idea of trading for Moda at the same time they got Ronnie Belliard from the Indians organization. Now they wish they had with the way he finished the season with the Mets. Great pickup by Omar Minaya. Had an ERA over six in Cleveland. Molina grounds to Reyes. One out. Aaron Miles now first at bat of the night. Takes a ball. David Eckstein on deck. Wainwright thinking about the ninth inning when Chavez will lead it off. And a pinch hitter will be coming off the bench for Willie Randolph, then Reyes. Anybody gets on Loduca, anybody after that, Beltran. 2 0 on Miles. That's a fair ball. Down the right field line. It's going to get past that area that juts out, and Miles is going to dig for three. Delgado's throw is late. It's a one out triple. Good time to try it. Moda trying to come inside to Miles. And with one out, you take the chance going to third base. And speaking of chances, Tony Larusa loves to squeeze with David Eckstein. Loves it. He did it once in the division series. So many things you can do with David Eckstein with a runner on third and less than two outs. 13 squeezes executed by Eckstein in his career. This is a squeeze situation. The infield is in. And the Mets pitch out because of it. LaRusso left Jeff Weaver in in the fifth with Beltron and Delgado coming up in a tie game and a man on. Weaver got out of it. He puts Miles into the game in the double switch when he made the switch to Wainwright, and Miles triples here with one out. Next time, fouls at strike one. That's after going against the quirky percentages of pinch hitting Chris Duncan against the left hander, and I mean a tough left hander, Pedro Feliciano, and Duncan Homer. David Eckstein in game four of the division series, the clinching night, Sunday night against San Diego. Squeeze it to score Spezio.
There's the squeeze, and Eckstein just gets a piece of it and fouls it. Well, some pitchers are trained to throw at the hitter in a squeeze situation. If he squares around the bunt, throw at him. Put him in a defensive posture. I always thought pitching out was better, but Moda came up in the Dodger organization, and the Dodgers throw at the hitters in squeeze situations. And that was very effective there. I think that pitch may have hit Eckstein on the hand. Hit him on the hand. Now it's a tough call for our, for an umpire. If it pinched him, he took a moment to walk around. It looked like it got part of the hand right there. On the fingers and Eckstein has taken a while now. And here comes Tony La Russa and Barry Weinberg again to check on Eckstein. Okendo came down first. It's almost like a defensive back. If a, if a, a wide receiver is going to receive a pass in their area, they're going to make you pay for it. And this is the philosophy of the Dodgers. That's the organization that Moda came up under is in a squeeze situation. If you see the, the, the hitter squeeze prematurely, throw at him, put him in a defensive posture. And that's what Moda did with Eckstein. And the squeeze was on. And Joe, I think you're right. I think it may have pinched the fingers, but it may have gotten bat too. And if that's the case, obviously, it's a foul ball. There it is blown up and it's still tough to tell. It looked yeah. like it might have gotten the back of the fingers on the right hand. But it got wood too, so it's a foul ball. Well, I tell you, he may be one of the smallest guys on the field, but he's definitely one of the toughest out there. And he's doing everything he can to see if he can stay in the game. The, the home plate umpire, Jeff Kellogg, gives him a ball to see if he can grip it. That's interesting because Tony La Russa will have to decide if he can go back out there regardless of what happens now whether he can go back out there and play defense in the night. Even with two strikes they may put the squeeze on again. Not if your motor go back inside and the count evens two and two. Well, there's no doubt this guy's a tough out. He's one of the toughest hitters in baseball to strike out. Little fly ball on the infield for Valentin. That's a big out for Moda. Out number two. And the batter will be Preston Wilson, runner at third, two out. Again, Wainwright will deal with Chavez, a pinch hitter, and Reyes for the Mets in the ninth. Wilson's RBI double, his first RBI of the postseason, came in the fifth inning. Putting St. Louis on top for the first time tonight. Made it 3 2. The Cardinals got a home run from Chris Duncan in the sixth inning. Made it 4 2, and it's still 4 2. One ball, one strike. All the incentive that Moda needs to get the out here with Wilson. Not put him on is standing in the on deck circle with Albert Pujols over there hoping to get another chance to hit. Wilson chops to Reyes. And a good job by Moda to get around the one out triple by Aaron Miles. We go to the ninth inning, game five. Series tied 2 2. Chavez will lead it off. 4 2 St. Louis. Andy Chavez first up. And Albert Pujols calls time and comes in to talk to Wainwright. There's obviously the bunt as a possibility for Chavez, who tonight is one for three. 
Cliff Floyd is on deck. Sailing fastball for strike one. Strike two. Idea about bunting. Chavez thought it was inside. Fights it off. Next time throws. Bad hand and all. One out. And now Cliff Floyd, who has not appeared in this LCS since game one, will dig in. He left after the second when he made his appearance as a hitter, fly to left, and could not get around the bases at all. Can't play the outfield, has a strained left Achilles. But he tries to get something started for the Mets. With one out in the ninth. Ball one. Tim, I don't know about you, but to me it seems like this game, all the Cardinals pitchers are establishing that inside fastball to all the lefties in this game. A little bit more than they did in the first four games of the series. Floyd takes over but low 2-0. I think Cliff will take again. I think what you have to do now is not be too fine and make sure Cliff Floyd puts the bat on the ball. Two run lead, not a one run lead. Didn't take, and it's two and one. Interesting to see Oliver getting loose out in the bullpen for New York, just tossing. Could be a possibility for a game seven start if there is one. Floyd, a guy who had 34 home runs last year, an injury riddled season this year, hit 11. But he is a threat. 4 2, St. Louis on top, ninth inning. To the right side, Pujols flashes in front of Wainwright, and the race to the bag, two down. Pujols aware that Floyd can't run real well. Here you've got a guy with a bad hamstring trying to tag first base, and the guy running has a bad Achilles. You saw the last time there was a postseason game six at Shea. It was the game six of the 86 World Series against Boston. Two out. Reyes takes the ball. Game six is tomorrow night at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. Cardinals trying to go up three games to two. One and one. Breaking ball for strike two. Takes game five, a final of 4 2. 